Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how to develop a Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations number sequence. Last week uh, we looked at how to use a number sequence, how to set one up in the system. We learned that number sequences provide unique values. We learned that you can uh, customize the format of the number sequence that's being generated um, to have maybe a constant at the front and that can help you better identify a number. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how technically you can create a new number sequence for your own tables. So let's get started. Um, as a brief high level overview, what we need to do is we need to identify a field um, and extended data type that we're gonna tie this um, uh, number sequence to. We need to create a number sequence application module class. Um, this provides the setup necessary for that number sequence to show on our number sequence tab on the parameters form. And I'll explain all the details of this in just a second. We need to create a runnable job to actually run that code and create that record um, in the parameters number sequence tab. Then we need to tie um, that number sequence reference to a number sequence code that we've set up or generated. And then lastly, we need to override the create method on the data source for our form so that every time we create a new record on our form, we get a new number sequence. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into step one. So step one is to find a table or field um, that you wanna use as a number sequence. So in a past article, I created this table called TUT, CAR, TUT being short for tutorial. Um, and I have a field called CAR ID, which would be my unique identifier for a car, and then I've got a description field, which could be free text that's a little longer. Well, let's say I want a number sequence um, to be used for this car ID so that I don't have to um, come up with a unique value myself. Um, we can do that. The important thing that you need to look at is this field must be a string and it needs to have an extended data type. So in this case, I'm using the extended data type um, tut car ID. I can look at that here by opening it up. Um, and then specifically, it's really important to have a label on your extended data type. I actually didn't do that at first and you'll see some of the consequences here. Um, but we need to remember the name of our extended data type, in this case, cut car, tut, or tut car ID. Um, the next thing, now that we've identified the field, is we need to create a new class. So you can right click on your project and say add class. And in my case, I actually already created it. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And this class can be named whatever you want. Um, it's helpful if you end it with numsec is kind of the standard practice. <clears throat> but the important thing is that you extend number sec or number sec application module. I can make this a little bit bigger for you to see. Um, this is really important. Okay, after you've created your new class and you've typed extends number sec application module, there's a few methods that we need to add. I'm actually gonna start from the bottom up. So first, we need to add um, this code right here called uh, build modules map subscriber. This helps associate our um, extended data type to um, these a uh, number sequence so and this class to a number sequence so in this case I named my class called cut tut car ID num sec that's what you want to replace in this code right here I've pasted it in the related blog as well so you can just copy and paste this whole thing from here and then replace the name of your class um, or replace this text with the name of your class if I scroll up, the next method we need to add is this number sequence module class. Um, we need to tell it, um, we need to tell the system what module should this uh, number sequence appear in. So we looked at last time, number sequences always appear in a number sequences tab 
on the parameters form associated with the module. So uh, it might be accounts receivable parameters form or accounts payable parameters form or whichever the name of your module is, um, it should be in the parameters form there. This is how we tell the system which module we want to add our number sequence to. So in this case, when I say number sec module colon colon cuss, I am telling it that I want it to be in the accounts receivable module. Now this is a little difficult to tell just by looking at this, how do I know cuss is tied to um, accounts receivable. Um, and th this isn't entirely easy, but you kind of just need to look at the um, base enum and then look at the associated labels um, for each one of these. So here I can see kind of the base enum and then it's actually been extended um, even by Microsoft a whole bunch of times. So if I actually open the designer for this application suite, I can see all of these different modules. Um, and then if I click on this cust one and I click in the field for the label, I can see that the label is actually accounts receivable. So I know that this is the enum that I should use. If I switch to vend, I can see vend would be the correct value to use if I wanted to add it to the accounts payable module. So you may need to do some little searching around to figure out which module um, or which enum is the correct one for your module. After that, you just um, make sure that you've added this method. Okay, so that's the second method. And then lastly, we get to this third method that's necessary. It's called load module. This method needs to be named this. It's gonna be called um, by the base class. And essentially, this defines um, some of the parameters on this um, number sequence. So the first thing we need to do is actually replace this text with whatever um, extended data type you are using. So my extended data type, if you remember, is tut car ID. If yours is different, replace um, this text right here. Also replace this text with whatever reference help text you want to use this reference help text will show on the front end form and help a user know um, what number sequence they're setting up this up for. You can also change this into a label and that's recommended. I just left it as plain text. The rest of these control some other parameters on the number sequence code um, form. We looked at these last week. These are just kind of the standard and most common ones. Um, we're specifying a scope that includes the company here. Um, you can definitely make changes to these if you want. And then lastly, this method calls create, which adds this number sequence reference to the, uh, to the form. Okay, so we've got this whole class. Again, all of this code is in the related article, so I recommend you copy and paste and just um, do the replacements you need. But then just having this code by itself won't add the record. We need to create a runnable class slash job to create that record. So you can do that by right-clicking on your project, saying add new item, and then select the um, runnable class job and then give it a name. You can give it whatever name you want and click add. I've actually already done that, so I'll go ahead and open that example here. So I called mine tut load car ID numsec. Um, and then it's got a main method. You just need to add two lines of code. You need to uh, instantiate a class variable of the type that you just created. So mine was called tut car ID numsec. So I created a variable of that type. I said equals new and the same class. And then on that variable, I called the method load. Now you might be a little confused. Why are we calling load instead of load module? Didn't we just add load module here? And that's true. A load is actually on the base class of the number sec application module class. And then this method will actually call the load module class as well as it, some other things that um, the system needs to truly add it. So those are the two lines of code that you need. Next, we need to actually run this code. The way we do that is you can right click 
on your runnable class and job and then say set as startup object. This will make that object bold in your Visual Studio project. Then you can click start and then the system will actually run this job and it will run the load module in your code that you've already uh, written over here and it will create that number sequence reference. I've already done that, so I'm gonna bring up um, Internet Explorer here, um, or Edge, and show you kind of the results. So if I actually go to the accounts receivable parameters form, which I can always get there by just um, searching in this top bar, and then clicking on that results, then if I scroll down and I find the number sequences tab, which I'll, I'll move this over right here so it's a little easier to see. Um, here is where all of my number sequences are set up. So these aren't new records that you create. These are created by the system seeing that code um, in those classes. And so if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can actually see my new record here for my tuck car ID. Normally this would show the label associated with the extended data type, but I didn't add my label before I, I ran this code. Um, next, you're going to see this number sequence code is no, uh, initially blank, um, and so that's what we need to set up, is we need to create some number sequence codes for this. I actually already ran these steps, so that's why it's populated. If we go to the number sequences form, it, again, you can find it by just searching for whoops, uh, number sequences. It's under organization, administration, number sequences, number sequences. On this form, it shows you all of the number sequence codes the, um, for the system. Again, number sequence codes get associated with number sequence references. Number sequence codes define the formats um, that are gonna, our numbers are going to use. So what you can actually do is you can come in here and click this generate button and it'll open up a wizard which will help produce these uh, any number sequence codes that are missing. If there are number sequences missing it'll pop up the wizard you can click next it'll show you all of the number sequences that um, it's going to create you click next again and click finish and it will actually generate the number sequence codes you need for that new number sequence reference you've um, created it'll create one per table or one per company if that's needed and we can even validate that by using our filters here by going to uh, accounts receivable and then change the reference to you know our extended data type we'll be able to see that in here and then you can even pick your specific company so I can scroll down I'm in the USRT company right now I can see that this is the number sequence code that was generated by the wizard again I, I already ran the wizard so it's already here um, and I can see the format that this will take. I can always edit this number sequence code and uh, set the format to be something different. If I go back to my parameters tab and refresh this form, I will actually see that this reference is now populated with this number sequence code. I can always change this to be a different one as long as it follows um, the same kind of form, uh, scope that's defined in code. All right, now that I've done that, there's one more code change that I need to make to actually use this number sequence. Um, if I open my form, the form that uses the tut car table is also called tut car. It's got a data source called tut car. What I can do is come down here, um, right click on this method node, and then say override and then override the create method. I've actually already overridden the create method, so it's not gonna show in here anymore, um, but for, if you're doing it for the first time, you click on that create method, and it will actually add the create method right here and open up a code editor. So I'll go ahead and do that now, I'll open it, and I can see here's the create method, and then I've gone ahead and added this code right here. Um, the super 
is going to be the code that does all of the base existing logic of creating a new record in this data source. And so then it's really just this code and these variables that I've added. The way this works is I've actually written it in a few lines of code to make this a little easier to read. But essentially, first, we need to find the number sequence reference that is tied to our extended data type that we want to get a number sequence for. So again, I use tut car ID because that's the name of my extended data type. And I call this method to say, hey, find the reference in the parameters form in that number sequence tab. Go ahead and find that record. Once I found that record, and if I found that record, then we're going to use this special method that already exists called number sec new get number. We're going to pass in this number sequence reference. This tells it, you know, what code to use and uh, by proxy the format. And then lastly, we're going to call dot num on this um, object. And what this is going to do is it's going to get a, the next number for us, that next string, which includes whatever formats defined in this number sequence. And then I went ahead and I assigned it to a local variable first. And then um, I'm going to assign that variable to the data source field. So in this case, tut car um, in this context refers to the currently selected record on the data source for tut car. Your data source would be named something else. And then I'm saying dot car ID. Car ID is the name of the field that I want to set this value to. Yours, again, likely would be named something else. And then I'm going to set it equal to this value that I've gotten out of the number sequence. And then that's it. So next, I just need to compile my code and actually run it. So you can go up to build, build solution, wait for that to build, then go ahead and open Dynamics 365 uh, again. Go to your form. So in this case, I've got a form um, just called car that I've added to accounts receivable vehicles. Um, and now when I click new, the system automatically sets this car ID field to the next number in this number sequence. And then, you know, I can call it whatever I want in a description field, but I don't have to worry about getting a unique identifier um, here. Um, and that's really useful. It keeps a consistent format. I could have used a um, prefix called card dash um, to help a uh, user understand you know where this data is coming from so there you go that's how we create um, a number sequence in code set it all up for a new table or field that you've created okay i hope you've learned something new today thanks so much for watching i really appreciate you watching if you like the video click the like button i also invite you to push the subscribe button as well if there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.